Let's build a detailed habitat for the first animal from the Arid Animal Pack that we'll be adding to the Elm Hill City Zoo. And this is the adorable African Crested Porcupine. <laughs> guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. It is time to add the first animal from the Arid Animal Pack to our Elm Hill City Zoo and this is of course the African Crested Porcupine. If you would ask me a while ago what are some of the animals that I would like to see added to Planet Zoo, I will for sure mention the porcupine because it was so high on my wish list, and I am so happy that it was finally added and that it looks so beyond amazing. By the way, before we'll start talking about today's habitat, let me know what you think about the new intro. I made it using the new cinematic root editor and it is so so fun to play with this camera mode and if you guys like it, I can of course use it all to showcase my builds in the future videos. But coming back to our porcupine, uh, the African Crested Porcupine is actually one of the largest rodents on Earth. Of course, the first spot belongs to the capybara that we already have in the Elm Hill City Zoo, uh, but the porcupine is the largest of the porcupines because there are actually several of the porcupines uh, on our planet. They are native to the sub-Saharan Africa, but can be also found in the northern Africa and in Italy which I didn't know before <laughs> this animal was added to Planet Zoo. It's, it's always so nice to learn something. I've been to Italy many times, but I actually didn't know that I can meet a porcupine there. If I did, I would probably try to find and see one, but uh, they are also nocturnal, so it would be quite hard to see them during the day. Of course, the porcupines are known for their quills. The quills can grow up to 35 centimeters, and uh, when the African crested porcupine is threatened, it will rise its quills to appear bigger and more threatening to the predator. And if this will fail and they will not scare off the predator, they will actually attack it. Uh, they will just run backwards and, you know, hit the predator with the quills. And they are known to injure animals like lions, leopards, hyenas, or even humans. So, yeah, quite an interesting animal. They actually live in the burrows. They love to dig. Uh, they are herbivores, so they eat a lot of plants, fruits, bark and so on. And this is all that we have to take in consideration while building a habitat for them. So, most of the habitats that I've seen online for the uh, African Crested Porcupines are not super inspiring. Uh, they are rather like a plain with a lot of dirt, some logs, maybe a rock wall here and there, and that's basically all. They are usually kept alone in their enclosures, but uh, I've seen some examples online of them uh, living with meerkats or even warhawks in the same enclosure. Uh, so. I think that it could work uh, in Planet Zoo as well. Of course, they don't have an interspecies enrichment with them, but uh, I am sure that if you'll place them together in one habitat, it shouldn't be a problem uh, because I saw some concerns about, uh, you know, them not having an interspecies enrichment with the other animals, uh, but this is just an interspecies enrichment. They won't just get that, but I am sure that they can live together. Just like, for example, I don't know, the Aldabra Gentor tortoise and the lemurs. I've seen people uh, building habitats for them and keeping them together and it totally works. They just don't get the interspecies enrichment. Uh, so if you would like to build a habitat for the African crested porcupine and mix it with another animal, you should be good to go. My inspiration for this habitat was actually something that won't come as a big surprise to some of you. Uh, it was again a Berlin Zoo. <laughs> I really like the Berlin Zoo uh, crested porcupine habitat because it had a really cool uh, like fence like uh, more like a wall or anything like that and it had a really cool rock wall uh, back inside in Berlin so they're actually housed next to the meerkats and they have like this glass uh, wall that the animals can actually see each other but they cannot you know 
walk to each other's enclosures. But uh, yeah, this was quite a nice city zooish uh, like uh, habitat for the African crested porcupine. Those enclosures in zoos are general, as I told you guys, super plain, or this is just like a um, small cage for this animal, uh, or they're super over the top, like in some high budget animals with some, you know, rock formations and stuff like that. But uh, those things didn't like work for me. So I knew that there is this really cool habitat in Berlin soon, and I decided to uh, build something inspired by it. Uh, so I took this like wall with this small mesh on the top that you could see me um, building at the beginning from that zoo. Uh, and I also took the idea for the rock formation. When it comes to the rock formation, I wanted to create something like a fake mountain that would be just like higher up above all the habitats that are uh, next to it to just create like a focal point for the gas. It looks really cool from the uh, from the distance. Uh, so this was like an entrance or anything like that to our uh, African area of that zoo. This habitat will be located next to the zebra and the wildebeest habitat that we've built. And behind it, you can see the uh, red river hawk habitat that we've built as a first build uh, of for the tropical animal pack. Uh, and also also uh, on the left hand side there is the entire wetlands house and they are quite close to the capybara so for me it all makes sense because they are next to a really big rodent and also next to all the African animals from the African section so I thought that this positioning of the habitat is just amazing and makes sense. Uh, so yeah I focus a lot on building this like uh, rock structure from the stalagmite pieces. I actually got some questions. Uh, lately if those are mods like those uh, you know those rock walls no they are not mods those are made from the stalagmite pieces I made them myself and they're actually on the workshop so if you go and look for those uh, look for me Caesar creates on the steam workshop you should be able to find them after I was pretty happy with the whole rock structure I added a lot of plants on it because I wanted to make it look a bit overgrown there won't be a lot of plants in the habitat itself because the porcupines are herbivores and they will simply eat them. Uh, this is the reason why most of the habitats for the porcupines are just plain and boring because they are eating all of the all of the plants in those uh, in their habitats. What I also saw in many of their habitats is that zoos really take that into consideration that they are uh, diggers so they make sure that there is some concrete around the fence or anything like that that they won't be able to you know dig just under the fence and escape uh, that's why I uh, like I sung the entire enclosure a bit into the ground and I uh, added like a little ledge of concrete around this fence that we've built uh, this is just to prevent the animals from digging and escaping of course it doesn't work like that in planet zoo but we are trying to build something realistic uh, because i've sung the entire habitat a little, a little bit you know down into the ground uh, and i added this fence then we had like this a bit uneven edge of the terrain that's why i covered it with the plaster pieces and there will be also a path later on also covered with those pieces so you cannot see that there is some uneven terrain. This is such a cool trick uh, if you are struggling with the path and just cover the path with something else. I sometimes get those questions from you guys how I make the path so seamless and mainly it is because I am covering the paths with <laughs> some other materials like concrete plaster and so on and that's why I am able to create some really like seamless shapes uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, when you are watching this video, the Arid Animal Pack is already out and you can all enjoy it. Because of the early access that I was given by Frontier, I could enjoy the pack a little bit earlier. So as always, I am super grateful for Frontier that they allow us uh, content creators to do it and to even upload our videos a day before the pack comes out. So you guys can all see what, is, what the pack is all about, see the animals and so on before you purchase it. 
Uh, I used to upload three videos uh, at the day before the pack comes out. I always did the uh, free update showcase, I did the DLC overview and showcase and so on, and I also uploaded one uh, habitat for the first animal that I decided to build from the new pack. But this time I decided that this might be a little too much. <laughs> uh, there are so many videos coming out on this one day before the pack comes out uh, that, you know, there's only so, so many videos that you guys can watch. More and more people get the early access and this is actually so cool and I totally support this. But then <laughs> the thing happens that, uh, you know, people upload two or three videos this day and there is like, I don't know, 30 videos uploaded at the same time to YouTube and it's normal that you won't have time to watch it. So I decided to change things up a bit this time. Uh, so uh, yesterday I actually uploaded my Arid Animal Pack uh, like overview and also an overview of the new update 1.14 uh, and if you guys haven't seen that by any chance I will put the link down in the description links to those videos uh, down in the description and on the screen right now so you can check them out uh, this pack uh, this pack is quite interesting for me because I think that uh, the animals are just just amazing they are just top-notch designs by from Frontier, they are they are super amazing like each and every of those animals uh, I see a lot of work and love put into them and they look just amazing what can I say more uh, all of those are just spot on even the sand cut that uh, many people thought that will look bad based on the first screenshot that we got uh, I feel like this was just a bad angle on of the screenshot and when you actually see it in the game it looks amazing uh, I mean, just look at the thumbnail that I did for the uh, animal animal pack showcase. Like, it looks amazing. Uh, so yeah, the animals are just, just, just beautiful. Uh, but the interesting thing for me is that uh, there is a lot of animals that were actually not like fan favorites. Like, I saw a lot of comments that people like actually didn't want those animals and so on. I love them. I am super happy that we have so many ungulates in the pack and. Uh, because I just love those animals and I love building for them. But I can actually see why people are slightly upset. Uh, I would totally swap, swap one animal, like a Dama Gazelle, for example, for something more that people actually want. <laughs> uh, like, uh, for example, a secretary bird or a, a baboon. Those are probably the most requested animals that could work for this DLC. Uh, and I think that swapping only one animal would make it like this one tier better and many people would be like really really happy about this pack because it is like the, as I told you guys the work that was put into the into this pack <laughs> is just amazing like Frontier they redid really a super super nice job on it I just feel like they could you know change one animal and the DLC would be perfect uh, this is what I basically wanted to say. And even though, though this animal is beautiful and I fall in love with it when I saw it in the game, uh, I feel like the animal that should be like swapped uh, should be unfortunately the Dama Gazelle. It is an animal, it is a beautiful animal, don't get me wrong, but this is not an animal that we just needed in the game and maybe uh, if we could get some other animal instead of the Dama Gazelle, people would be just more happy. Uh, like I saw you guys a secretary bird a baboon or a, or maybe a kudu or an elant uh, those animals are also uh, ungulates like antelopes from uh, africa but they are slightly more requested by the community uh, so yeah those are my thoughts about the pack uh, i still love it and the african crested porcupine that we are building for today just proves how well made this dlc is because the model of that animal is simply beautiful i wanted the crested porcupine 
fine for such a long time as I told you guys, but I was slightly like, okay, if they will add them one day, how it will actually look because of the quills, because of all the hairs and so on, because I knew that this animal would be quite difficult to model because of all those details, but they nailed it so, so much. Uh, this animal has so many details and it's so, so amazing. The quills work so well and I am very, very happy about this. Like when you now place the porcupine next to an animal like a lion from the base game or I don't know, a warhog that is also not the best model. Uh, there are some of those animals. They actually look like animals from different games for me. <laughs> like this is just an on another level. Like the, like the development and improvements of those models of animals over the years by Frontier is just amazing. It's just wonderful and uh, I cannot wait to see what animals will get in future DLCs and I hope there is so many more to come. Please Planet Zoo don't end the support of this game because I won't do I don't know what I would do with my life. Like I actually thought about it <laughs> recently because people are are saying that there are only two uh, DLCs left but there's still no confirmation about this <laughs> and I'm hopeful that there is there will be more and actually I if there will be only two left I like ending the support of for Planet Zoo it definitely won't stop me from uploading the videos from this game. Uh, I cannot see myself right now switching to another game. If there will be, for example, Planet Coaster 2, I would try it, but I am not a huge roller coaster fan, to be honest. Like, amusement parks are just not for me. <laughs> I, I don't know, I can go there, but this is nothing too exciting for me. When I am in the zoo, I am just a little, like a little kid excited and, you know, over the moon, and I love the zoos because I simply love animals and this is my hobby, this is what I love, this is what I enjoy. So uh, unless you give me another zoo game, <laughs> I don't see Planet Zoo going anywhere uh, from my channel and of course uh, we will try and do everything to finish the Elm Hill City Zoo and finish the Desert Adventure Park even though, even if the Planet Zoo will end, if the support will end, we'll still do it. I saw on YouTube that some people also decided to go for a porcupine as their first animal and I totally cannot blame them this is it is amazing uh, so I hope you guys will be willing to watch another porcupine video uh, I'm actually a bit glad that I didn't uh, upload this video yesterday because you will have so many porcupine <laughs> videos uh, on one day and you guys actually could see me adding this lock in the in the enclosure uh, and I had this idea of making it like a hollow lock and I decided to use the borrow for it I tried to blend the lock with the uh, with the borrow to make it look seamless but it doesn't look the best I must I admit uh, I just saw so many hollow locks in the porcupine uh, habitats I think that they love to sleep in the hollow locks so I decided to go for something like this but actually I watched a video by Eben that he uploaded yesterday and he actually did something very similar using the bark pieces uh, from the tropical pack and I don't know why I didn't think think about this because I was actually struggling with this log for so long and this is such a clever idea and I hope that Eben won't mind if I will at some point like swap it for the something that he came up with because I'm not a huge fan of this log that I created but I finished this habitat before I saw it on his channel so I didn't have a chance to uh, change that and I am uh, uh, recording this video a day before this uh, video will actually come out so a day before the pack actually comes out I also forgot to mention that today I will announce or I already did that I don't know uh, but I will announce the winners of the uh, DLC codes uh, of the Arid Animal Pack uh, giveaway and also the winners for the tickets to my local zoo uh, so if uh, check if I haven't replied to your comment under the crocodile video that you actually won uh, and if I I did that if you have a little message saying congratulations please contact me so we can settle all the details of how I'll give you the code or the tickets 
Oh my god, we had so much to talk about in this video that uh, I actually barely told you, told you what I am building today, what I am adding to this habitat and so on. So I talked about the fence, I talked about the uh, rock formations, I also talked about the plants, uh, but inside of the actual habitat I added a lot of locks. This was something that I saw in many of the porcupine habitats. I think that this is also important for them to have something to graze on, to like, uh, you know, tear down their teeth but I might I may be wrong about this uh, but uh, there's a lot of porcupine habitats that have a lot of logs so I wanted to add this as well I added a lot of dry uh, plants like dead plants so they look a bit like the porcupines actually ate them and uh, some leaves there a lot of de decals to make it look a bit more like detailed and in more interesting uh, what I also did was add some enrichment items and then I started to work on the shelter for the porcupines. Uh, the shelter is really small. I really wanted to blend it into this rock formation that we did. That's why uh, by the end, at the end of the video, you'll see me creating this green roof in there. And there will also be a skylight. And it looks really amazing. Uh, inside, I also did some backstage stuff. I did two stalls for them to sleep in. Uh, and also they, that they can be separated if there is a need for that. Uh, I did some keeper stuff and so on, like some tools, uh, some rakes, hoses and <laughs> and stuff like that, a typical thing. And I also worked on uh, making sure that the, the porcupines will be able to go inside. So it's an entrance for the porcupines and enters, entrance for the keepers to go there. Uh, in the place where you will see the doors uh, in this habitat, there's actually a habitat gate, like an in-game in habitat habitat gate sink, sank into the rock walls so the keepers can enter this habitat. Sometimes when I hide those doors, uh, the habitat gates, uh, I get those questions uh, from you guys, how the keepers are able to uh, walk inside the enclosure, how they are able to uh, feed the animals. Uh, and the gate is usually there, <laughs> somewhere hidden, but the only exception is the new crocodile and gharial habitats. The keepers cannot enter those habitats, but in the rest of the habitats, the keepers can do everything just as they can do in here. Okay guys, so this is actually all that I have for you in today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the cinematic shots will be after I will be done talking. Uh, so make sure to stay and watch those because this habitat came out better than I imagined. So I am really happy with this, uh, especially with the time constraints that I have. Uh, I was building it during the early access while also uh, recording two more videos showcasing all the new things so it was certainly a lot of work and I am quite tired right now. Okay guys, thank you so so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, if you like to support my channel a little bit extra, you can do it with the join button down below. Hello. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!